Hello, hello everybody and welcome! This is Kat and today we are painting with two of my favorite drinks. We are painting with tea and we are painting with coffee. Grab a drink yourself and let's get started! I'm jumping straight into the sketching process because I already know what I want to paint. I'm using a erasable mechanical pencil from Pilot and I'm using a 300 GSM watercolor paper from Canson. If you're wondering what on earth I'm sketching here, what are these tubes, well, I don't know what to tell you because they are not really based on anything that I've seen, it's just something that I came up with when I was doodling a couple of days ago and I was actually practicing flowers and succulents but I got really frustrated with the fact that I couldn't draw them very well. So I decided to invent my own and I just randomly created some corals, succulents, plants, whatever these things are. But I'm super happy with the way they look. I think they are super quirky and that's what I'm going for. I guess you can say this is more of a decorative idea rather than an illustrative one. I was going for something very simple because I've never actually painted with tea or coffee before and I didn't want to complicate things very much by creating an intricate design like a character or an animal. Having really simple shapes will hopefully allow me to focus on the medium that I'm working with, getting the tones right, getting some contrast if I can manage that, rather than me being distracted by the idea the concept and trying to figure out a way to use a medium that I've never used before in conjunction with a project that is complicated and requires a lot of detail. This is a useful idea to remember anytime you're using a new medium that you've never used before and you don't know how it's going to behave. Go for something very simple, something that's not going to require your attention when it comes to concept or shape, but rather it will allow you to focus on the medium itself because the simple shapes are not going to distract you. Let's erase some of the sketch so it doesn't show through. Painting with tea and coffee is not a new idea. Many artists here on YouTube have done it before as a challenge and it's been on the back of my mind for some time as something to try out in the future. But I didn't really have any ideas of what I could paint so it was just something in the back of my mind, something to do at a later date. But inspiration struck a couple of weeks ago when I was watching a video from Hulo Alice. If you don't know who she is, I will link her details in the description. Please go and check her out because she's absolutely amazing. She's a big artist here on YouTube and she mainly does watercolor paintings but her art is absolutely stunning. The video I was watching was about watercolor paper and she was comparing different types of watercolor paper and different brands. In order to show how the watercolor paper behaved she was painting the same succulent illustration on all of the papers and she was using this technique I've never seen before up to that point which I believe she called negative painting. My understanding of this technique is that in order to achieve darkness, to achieve shadows, you use multiple transparent layers and each layer covers a smaller area of the illustration. In this painting I'm making here, I used one layer to cover most of the illustration and I left a little bit of white from the paper in the center and with the second layer I applied it the same way but I left a larger area in the center and I will continue to do so until I achieve the intensity that I want. If it works out the way I hope it will, my illustration at the end should have a very soft gradient from light in the middle to darker sections towards the edges of the illustration. Obviously this is not realism, it's more of a stylistic choice and I think it would only work with objects viewed from above. Obviously this is not a realistic way of painting, I can't think of any scenario where light would actually look like that on any object, but it's a very pretty effect, it's something as I said a stylistic choice that you can make in your paintings and that's what inspired me in the first place and when I saw Alice's video I thought I absolutely have have to try this technique. The tea I'm using is box standard English tea. I used one bag of tea in a very small amount of water and let it soak for a long time, about 15-20 minutes I believe. And I have to admit I was super impressed and surprised by how many tones I was able to get with this tea. I did not expect it to be this pigmented. I don't think I would have gotten so much pigment if I were to use plant or fruit infusions. Oh my gosh look how beautiful this tea is, I love the stains, but I don't think there's enough contrast so I'm gonna use a fine liner from Stavilo to create a bit of contrast and to add some definition. This liner has a very similar color and a very small tip so hopefully I'll be able to create an outline that 
gives a bit of contrast but without being obnoxious. And I also think that the illustration is quite bland being monochrome so I thought I'm gonna add a second color just to give it a pop and I'm gonna use this aqua green Posca which I think it's gonna work amazing. I don't think you guys saw me using these fine liners before but I do like them a lot. I use them for outlining and for shading. These are my favorite fine liners. They are juicy but without being too wet and it allows me to do such a large variety of artwork with them. The only downside is that these fine liners are not waterproof so I can use them once the illustration is dry and I just want to add some accents but unfortunately I can't use any kind of water paints on top of them because they would just smudge. And the part I've been so excited about ever since I got the idea of using the Posca pants, I think this color looks just amazing. It's so stunning in contrast with the warm yellow of the tea. I'm super happy with the decision of adding this Posca pen because it's just so beautiful and oh my gosh, I'm in love with this color scheme. And to be honest, this was a last minute decision and it was a very fortunate one because I own exactly three Posca pens and one of them happened to be a color that would work so well. If you've ever worked with Posca pens you know that they have a tendency to eat the paper and you get these tiny bits of paper accumulating on the tip. To my surprise I discovered that having a coat of tea on top of the paper just prevents that from happening which is amazing. Alright so here is my tea painting and can we just take a moment to appreciate how beautiful this color scheme is. I am so happy with the way it turned out it's, it's just perfect. Round 2, painting with coffee. I've got this swatch here and I can tell right off the bat this is gonna give me so much better contrast. I've got the sketch done, so let's start. I'm gonna use the same painting technique I used when I painted with tea, but I need to be very careful because coffee is way more pigmented and more dark than tea, so I need to make sure that my light layers are light enough. What I'm noticing right away is that coffee dries immediately. I just put it on the paper and the next minute it's dry if I don't move my brush. And this is quite surprising. For some reason I expected coffee to take longer to dry because it's more dense and more consistent, but for some reason it's the other way around. It's it's a nice surprise to be honest. When I went into this project I had this idea in my head that coffee is gonna take a long time to dry and I was prepared for that. What I wasn't prepared for was the opposite. Tea actually took way longer to dry. Some of the last layers that I put on my tea painting took somewhere between an hour and a half and two hours to dry which was ridiculous. I mean I spent so much time waiting for the bloody paper to dry and so little time actually painting on it. So I'm super happy to discover that that coffee takes less time to dry because there's nothing worse than wanting to paint and you can't do it because the bloody paper is still wet. When I decided to do this video I wanted to do three different illustration with three of my favorite drinks because I actually drink tea, coffee and coke as my day-to-day -day intake of liquid but I did have some concerns about the coke because I know it's quite diluted I mean you can see it in a glass it's not very pigmented even though it looks black so I did a couple of of swatches before trying anything major with it and it turned out the coke is so so diluted I wasn't able to build up any kind of color. Another problem with coke was the fact that it contains sugar or sweetener if you go for diet coke and that sweetener or sugar makes it very sticky once it dries not to mention it takes forever to dry for that reason. So no matter how much I tried I wasn't able to come up with anything in terms of painting with coke. The illustrations just did not show any kind of color. If you guys know of any way of painting with coke, if you've done it before and you found a trick or a way around the issue of not being able to build up color, let me know in the comment section. I would love to try it out maybe in the future. Until then I think I'll stick with painting with coffee because I just love the way coffee stains the paper. I love the watercolor effect. Right, so the painting is not quite dried yet but I had an idea how about I use some more coffee and then I sprinkle some of this instant coffee on the wet paper and see what kind of effect that creates. I'm just gonna use the coffee as thick and dark as it comes from the jar and see if I can put like really thick lines all around the painting. I'm trying to go for like a border kind of a look. And now I'm gonna spread this coffee outwards, try to create a bit of a gradient. I'm not really sure how the coffee, the dry coffee will interact once it hits the wet surface, but I am kind of expecting some of it to blend and dissolve into the wet surface and maybe get like a splatter effect. Okay, moment of truth. I'm a bit nervous because this is either gonna work amazingly or it's gonna completely destroy my painting. Oh, okay. It's, it's not that bad. 
but I actually really do like this, the coffee is dissolving into the wet surface and it's creating this very interesting texture. Oh my gosh, this was the best idea I ever had. I don't know about you guys, but I am absolutely in love with this effect of the coffee dissolving into a wet surface. I'm gonna let it dry for a bit and then I'm gonna add some Posca pen. There we have it guys, my two experimental paintings with tea and with coffee. I rarely get this excited about my own creations, but I swear these two pieces are probably my favorite so far. Something about painting with coffee and tea with mediums that are not supposed to be used in painting just gave me so much joy and excitement. I loved every aspect of this process, I loved the color palette, I just loved the whole thing. I think I'm gonna call them my bubbles of joy and I'm gonna definitely do more in the future. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me have fun. If you painted along, tag me on Instagram because I would love to see what you guys created. And let me know your thoughts on this medium in the comment section. And as always, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.